Hey guys, this is a long overdue video I should have made years ago. Now this is a strictly factual, non-opinionated video. I'm going to break down an OM617 ALDA and actually show you how it works. I'm sick and tired of people on the internet telling other people they're idiots every time they mention deleting their ALDA. There are plenty of scenarios where it's completely justified and I'm going to explain and show some of those to you here. Now keep in mind, this video strictly only applies to stock pumps. We're not talking about upgraded pumps. They require an ALDA or they run too rich. They're uncontrollable without them. There's a high demand for good used ALDAs for the pump builders. So if you're deleting your ALDA and you don't plan to upgrade your pump, please consider listing your ALDA for sale because these are no longer made and we absolutely need them for the larger element pumps. So for those who are too lazy to take an ALDA apart, I have already got the screws loosened up. They are flathead cap screws. Once inside, we'll see these weird alien-like contraptions in here. And they are basically identical discs. This is what your adjustment does. You have the screw on here that moves this up or down so when you're wondering okay I'm, I'm turning so many threads in I'm turning so many threads out what is that doing it's actually threading this and moving it and so there's the inside of the top cover you got an o-ring seal you have a port here. This is where the air comes in from the turbocharger. This is the bottom half of the ALDA. So the O-ring seals against here. You have an O-ring here as this plunger is going to move up and down against this O-ring. So this is a sealed air chamber. This is essentially a cylinder. So you have these two diaphragms. I'm not sure if that's copper or brass. I'm guessing copper. And there's a metal disc. A uh, steel disc, I should say, on both. Now I want you to see that these diaphragms don't seat tightly against the wall. There's, this isn't sealing against this internal diameter. Air can pass freely around all of this. So what's going to happen when you introduce air pressure into this chamber, you have air pressing on all four sides, which is going to collapse this, okay? It's going to smash it together doesn't have to move very far but this is so intricate because you're talking about 10 psi that this is going to move different amounts this will be collapsed a different amount at 2 psi than it will at 7 psi and all that does is it raises this up so when remember this this part is threaded into here this part's threaded inside the top cap, so it's not going to move down. When it um, collapses, it's going to move up. And this piece is going to move up. I should also mention that there was a film of oil on here, and these were like super glued together. I think the, the way they have this figured out is another marvel of engineering they've got the surface tension of the fluid figured out to where that basically glues these together so when you have air press on here this all goes up now it's all fine and dandy except the fact that this is a spring and at the time of filming this video most of these are 40 years old or older and as we all know anything wears out I could sit here and knock on this wood repeatedly and eventually I'd wear a hole through it. Springs wear out a lot quicker than that. They're a high fatigue device. They move. 
they go through heat cycles and they wear out and these parts are not replaceable so people always like to say you're an idiot if you don't just rebuild or adjust your ALDA instead of deleting it well it's pretty obvious that you can't go out and get replacements for these springs and once they've worn out to the point you can't adjust them anymore there is no solution but to delete the ALDA once you've taken this apart and you've seen that this is the spring inside it's pretty obvious that if that's your argument that we're idiots for just deleting it you obviously have never been inside an ALDA or you'd see why you can't just replace the springs now I don't know exactly every detail that adds up to these 40 year old ALDAs not functioning like they were when they were new I'm simply pointing out to you everything that I can see and giving you my logical assessment as to why these aren't going to work the same now as they did in 1980 when they were new. So one thing we can consider is any cyclically loaded part like this diaphragm is subject to cracking, at which point it won't function properly at all. If you get any cracks in here, air is going to get inside and a diaphragm only works when it's sealed. I don't know the material of this diaphragm, but it's possible that these actually become stiffer over time, which when you think about it logically, would explain why the OM617 gets more lethargic and benefits from an ALDA adjustment if it's never been done. I keep this in mind when I go over the pump. If they get stiffer, that'd mean you'd need more boost pressure to reach max fuel, and that's not a good thing. You don't want to have to have 15 PSI to burn fuel that only takes 10 PSI to burn because then you're just creating unnecessary heat. Unfortunately, I don't have a brand new ALDA diaphragm to compare against. The thing I do know is when you take an ALDA that's never been touched before, it still has a security cap in it, and you remove that and you adjust this, you tune this up, you get more performance out of your engine like you would have had 40 years ago when it was new. So there is an add up of things that have changed inside here in the last 40 years to make this restrict how much fuel you're getting out of the OM617. So logically speaking, if these are getting stiffer, that would make the most sense. Other problems that can happen, so this O-ring could fail and that could allow air to escape out of this plate. The shaft seal could leak boosted air past this shaft, which would allow your turbo boosted air into the crankcase, which is obviously bad, and would also render the ALDA not functional. And this is likely one of the biggest problems that is happening that we can't see. There's no way that this shaft seal is still functioning 100% when it's 40 plus years old. If this is leaking, that would mean you send 10 PSI into this chamber, but the chamber might only see 5 PSI because it's slowly leaking pressure down past this seal. Now, being a hydraulic cylinder engineer for four years, I can tell you these shaft seals are extremely specific. They're hard to find, hard to match. It's likely this specific seal is not made anymore, and if it fails, it would render this whole part useless and ready to go in the trash bin. So in the scenario where this becomes much stiffer or it cracks or your seals fail, that's a great example where it makes perfect sense to simply delete the ALDA. So as that plunger gets air pressure and is moving upwards, it's moving away from the top of the injection pump. And if we take the cover off, we can see we have this contraption inside. It's just a rod on a linkage. And that moves another linkage inside. I'd like to point out that the bottom diaphragm spring has this shaft, and all it does is rests over the top of this shaft. All it can do is push down on the shaft has no way of pulling up on it like so many people seem to think it does. It doesn't thread on there. It just rests over top of it freely and all it can do is push down. So it's kind of hard to show you. It's all pitch black in here. But this rod moves up and down. 
that is what the ALDA controls. It lets this rod move further up and out of the pump as the turbo builds more boost. What that does inside the pump is it allows more fuel to be delivered to the engine. So if we have this down, there's less travel than if we have it, have it all the way up. That's what the ALDA is actually affecting on the pump, is the movement, the travel via this rod. So we put this, we put this back on here. But this rod wants to be all the way up and out for you to have full fuel, full movement inside the pump. Without any boost, without any air pressure inside the ALDA, that spring is pushing down on this rod. I realize the disassembled pump might be confusing for some of you to look at, especially if you're not listening to what I'm saying and you're just trying to skim through this video. So I'll show you this assembled pump. You can see the spring, washer, and C-clip attached to the shaft that hold the shaft up and out. In static position, this is up and out without anything touching it. So you can see the travel. The ALDA would be pushing against it. And as boost pressure comes into the ALDA, the diaphragms would collapse and this would press out. The delete does not touch the shaft and does not affect the shaft coming out of the pump. So when you turn the ALDA screw out, you're threading that top spring diaphragm up towards the top of the cap, which lets this rod come further out. And that's where you get the adjustment of quote unquote turning the screw. If you turn the screw in, it pushes it down, which restricts your fuel. And lastly, we have the ALDA delete. This threads in. We've got a copper crush washer here that is crushed against the inside of this. It seals so that we don't have any oil vapor escaping by because oil can come up past this rod, past this seal. The seal's hard, it's worn out, it's over 40 years old at this point. And you'll have oil weep by and create a mess on top of your pump. And this allows this rod to always remain all the way up so that we have full fuel. That's what the ALDA delete does. So keep in mind with the way a coil spring wears out, the coil spring under the shaft could wear out and lose its ability to hold the shaft up and out of the pump if the ALDA is pushing on it with the same amount of force. Now, of course, I can't measure that when it's all assembled, but I can tell you if you delete it, these coil springs are stiff enough. I've never seen one fail to hold the shaft up. This takes quite a bit of pressure with my thumb. It actually hurts to push it down. It's pushing out on it so hard. So the way everything adds up with the fatigues and the change in spring rates of everything, it's very possible that this isn't going to move out the same amount with the same 10 PSI stock boost pressure as when it was new. But I can all but guarantee you, if you delete the ALDA, this is going to press all the way out. You shouldn't have a problem with that coil spring being worn out and failing to press the shaft all the way out. And one last thing I'd like to touch on. People will say, well, I deleted my ALDA and I didn't get any more power. All I got was more black smoke. Well, it's not rocket science. You've just unlocked full throttle travel inside the pump. That doesn't mean you have to use all of it. Use your brain and take your foot out of the throttle pedal and you won't blow more black smoke. It's this extra fuel that you have on tap in scenarios when you need it, that's the benefit. If you upgrade to my HE200 turbo, it will absolutely benefit from having this extra fuel on tap right off idle because the turbo is more efficient. It can take that extra fuel and utilize it and get spooling quicker so hopefully now that you've seen firsthand how all of these parts work and all of the many potential failure points, it'll be obvious that there are plenty of scenarios where simply deleting your ALDA will make the most sense.